Hi everyone, welcome to the session of our web series, Fireside Chat with Champions, in which we interview global business leaders, asking them crowdsourced questions relevant to the biggest challenge we face today, COVID-19 and its impact on various aspects of business and the way we can steer ourselves in current uncertainties. Today we have a very special guest with us, Arvind David Chia. He's a director of the Imagineering Institute Malaysia, full professor at I University Tokyo, visiting professor at Tefels University Malaysia, visiting professor at University of Novi Sad, Serbia, and CEO of Nikola Tesla Technologies Corporation. He's founder and director of the Mixed Reality Lab, Singapore, and was formerly professor of Pervasive Computing, University of London, full professor at Keio University, Graduate School of Media Design, and associate professor in the National University of Singapore. He has previously worked in real-time systems, soft computing, and embedded computing in Mitsubishi Electrical Research Labs, Japan. He has been working on research covering mixed reality, human computer interface, variable computers, and publicist computing, fuzzy systems, embedded systems, power electronics. He has successfully obtained millions of dollars in funding for externally funded projects in the area of variable computers and mixed reality from Media Development Authority, Singapore, Knight Defense Science Technology Agency, Ministry of Defense in Singapore, Science Center, to name a few. The research output has included numerous high quality academic journal papers, research awards, keynote speeches, demonstration to the state heads, and broadcast television worldwide, including CNN, CNBC, Discovery, National Geography. He is also the World Economic Forum's young global leader. Thank you for accepting our invitation. I would request you to let our viewers know a little bit more about your current interests and activities. Floor is your idea. Yes, thank you for the kind introduction. Well, uh, over the last few years, I've actually been in, in Malaysia, in uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, I was, uh, uh, I, the reason I came here, before that was in, you know, Civil London. The reason I came is because the, uh, uh, one of the uh, arms of the uh, Malaysian government decided to start a research laboratory called Imagineering Institute. Uh, so that was started about five years ago, five, nearly six years ago now, and uh, in a kind of new uh, a city area, you know, with uh, new science facilities and, uh, and uh, businesses, etc. So I came on the long trip from London to come to Malaysia, um, and over the last <clears throat> few years, uh, we've been researching uh, in a few different areas. One is uh, the topic of mixed reality, which I had been working on for quite a long time, maybe 20, 20 plus years. And this is where we merge the real world and the virtual world. And we all know about augmented reality, uh, uh, where you can see virtual computer graphics uh, overlaid on uh, uh, you know, a real-time video. It's very common now. In fact, you can, what used to be millions of dollars, now can be done on a, on a smartphone. and uh, even apps like, uh, for example, uh, the Snap, Snapchat, the, the kids, kids are using it, you know, the, turning their faces into uh, dog, cute dogs or something like this. Actually, the technology is, it was very complicated many years ago, but now it's basically free. So we've come a long way with mixed reality. But what we did in our lab is I wanted to uh, expand the mixed reality into not just uh, visuals, but also the other senses we have in our body, touch, taste, and smell. So we made devices that you could virtually touch someone, give someone a hug or a handshake through the internet, even kiss through the internet. Uh, we made devices where you could stimulate uh, virtual, just like you have virtual reality for your eyes with the goggles. Um, we, we made devices that uh, stimulate with electrical current your nose and tongue to produce artificial taste and smells. Um, so this was extending mixed reality into all of the five senses. But we, uh, I wanted to expand the work we did in Malaysia because we had quite a lot of, you know, research money. We, we could hire a lot of engineers um, and researchers. So we started to work on robotics. It started to look more on the software part, on artificial uh, chatbot, so that you know uh, you could have a virtual uh, robotic uh, chat friend that you could talk to, like a real human being. Uh, and then we then we we also 
started to think about the hardware of uh, humanoid robotics, uh, and which is still very, very early stage. But, uh, you know, uh, I believe that, uh, uh, that, you know, one of the things that will happen in the future is we'll have extremely uh, lifelike human robots uh, uh, that look uh, and can talk and, and can even express emotion uh, like humans and, and we will have them in our, in our, in our houses. So, so this is what I think is going to be the next step of, of our research. That's, that's great, Arvian. Actually, you've been doing really awesome stuff. Uh, and the COVID has made it more relevant because with uh, social distancing, right, a lack of availability of people for doing the mundane jobs in, in, in the superstores to the farms of the world, uh, the interaction between machines and human has become more relevant with each passing day. So I would like to understand from you that how do you see it going forward because of COVID, uh, the way people have been interacting with the machine, uh, is it that going to change or do you think that it, uh, COVID would act as a catalyst or do you see that actually like, you know, once the COVID is over, it would be well as usual and then we'll start again forgetting the very important things which we are doing. And uh, how do you see it going forward, the computer human interface look like? Well, I think, uh, you know, I was just actually uh, glancing at an article in New York Times and they were, they were trying to predict what would life be like uh, after COVID? And uh, the author of this article said that there probably will be fundamental changes in society. This is not like a, a, a small event or a minor event. Uh, this is something which has profoundly affected, you know, everyone around the world, uh, basically. And uh, he compares this to World War II and before that, the uh, Great Depression, you know, in, 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 in the 1930s. We probably all have sto stories of, uh, you know, our grandmothers uh, would make us eat every, every little last part of the food, you know, You'd not even leave a single rice on your plate because they went through the depression. They didn't have food, enough food. So even throughout their whole lives, they were obsessed. You can't waste food. And I think, you know, that's just a simple example that uh, we will be profoundly affected by this. Uh, you know, at first, uh, we didn't take it seriously and also a lot of people still don't take it seriously. You can read about those cases in USA, you know, uh, people still going to nightclubs and bars and whatever. But um, it's it's hitting hitting those places really bad. So Florida is now the worst place in the world, you know, uh, for coronavirus cases per head. And, and, and so, you know, a few weeks of pe people going to the bars and drinking in bars like we used to do, which was totally normal. Uh, and then you have the worst uh, uh, rate of uh, infections in the world, you know, just a few weeks later. So this is just something that uh, is, is profoundly changing people's lives. And, and uh, the, you know, the, the, uh, we've, we've never, this is a once in a, once in a century kind of event, I think, you know, I mean, I, I can't think of anything in recent history where we were uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, uh, you have to be in fear of being near other people physically, you know, so you know about the social distancing and wearing masks and this is all, until we have a vaccine, this is going to be the, the new normal, but, uh, you know, this will change people's lives because uh, uh, this is the, just a, a feature of the human brain that, uh, you know, even even after the vaccine is found, people will still, you know, feel uh, uh, that, uh, that their lives are profoundly changed. And just think about the children. I mean, um, we went from, uh, we went from the case where people would, academics like myself, you know, we used to have conferences and theoretically talk about online learning, the, you know, as a, theoretical thing and we thought it would happen maybe in 2050 but it happened in 2020 and it happened so quickly uh, uh, and uh, all the children are learning online and uh, so when even after the, the coronavirus uh, people are still going to keep learning online because uh, for example in my university in Tokyo 
they're, they're, they're saying that even even you know years later they probably will offer both online and offline so the students can decide i mean actually it, uh, and then uh, uh, some students might not want to travel one hour to the university just to listen to a lecture which they can listen online so you know a lot of things that uh, probably wouldn't have happened until 2050 because society is very conservative especially schools energy education they, they don't want to change but they'll we had to change very quickly because of this coronavirus but after this you know i think a lot of students will still want to continue the online learning or maybe they just want to go to the campus one day a week and you know the other four days uh, you know do it from their house so you know there'll be there'll be kind of mixed models um and even on a personal level i mean uh, it's quite relatively you know dangerous to go to the supermarket uh, you know you're crowded with people around and uh, it's, it's 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 all a little bit scary so you know a lot of people are ordering their shopping online and and the last few few weeks uh and months uh, we've done our shopping online and then i realized wow why did we spend so much time going to the supermarket before <laughs> i can click a few buttons and uh, it's delivered to my door you know so i don't think i will ever go back to my normal you know way of supermarket shopping i mean maybe once in a while just for you know just for novelty but for, for the main cases you know we basically order the same thing we basically eat the same thing every week right i mean we get some meat we get some vegetables we get some fruit and uh, uh these uh, uh online supermarkets they they learn what you buy so after a few weeks, you don't, almost don't have to do anything. It, it, it's got the list there for you. Just click a few buttons and, and then they, they bring it, they deliver it to your house. So, you know, uh, this, this is another example on a personal level. And I spoke to one of my former researchers. Uh, she, she's a, she has a doctorate and, uh, she, you know, she says, I would rather write a paper than go to the supermarket and get all the things and I, I can just save time so a lot of things will change i think i think we've we've learned to uh learn and work work and uh, and play using computers i think we've jumped jumped forward uh 30 years in the future because of this coronavirus and uh, and on a, and, a, and and also we've also gone back back to square one on a lot of things for example I'm not, I'm not sure in other countries but in malaysia everyone started making bread because uh, it was difficult to buy bread so people started to baking their own bread and then people realized oh homemade bread is quite good and it's not that difficult to make either so you know there's, there's opportunities in the future for companies maybe they deliver you the flour and the yeast and uh, 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 you make your own bread at home and uh, you know there'll be opportunities i think even for things which are let's say very ancient things that we did a few thousand years ago again we learned to do it i mean i'm i'm 48 i never made i never made bread in my life and i probably would never have made bread in my life if i didn't if it wasn't for this coronavirus but actually i realized it's quite quite enjoyable uh it's relaxing and it's quite easy and it tastes good so there's opportunities for i think even for entrepreneurs who want to do things which are going back a few thousand years and bringing that to, to our society. <clears throat> Very well articulated, I didn't actually, I, I, I fully appreciate that maybe in the new world we'll need skill set, which we were uh, not having just before Corona and we'll have to cultivate that, whether to feed ourselves or as you rightly said that we'll be interacting far more with computers, right? because you'll be doing a lot of things online. So that brings us to something which is closer to your heart. You've been an academician, you have been teaching a lot of uh, bright minds. I would like to understand from you that don't you think that actually more we restrict ourselves to a controlled environment of our room sitting in front of computers, right? Not interacting with the world at large could impact negatively for our learning because this machine will learn far more because they are doing a lot of tasks, right? From, from uh, as I said, that holding products to like, you know, finding new errors, new challenges, and then rectifying that cell. So our algorithms will become far smarter than our own individuals because they would be sitting in front of computers and only error can be them not typing on the uh, typically your keyboard. So how do you see that this new world where uh, the education and the pedagogy need to transform substantially 
because we would be living in a very very different world post covid well yes i mean i i i think uh, I, i think you know with with uh, with entrepreneurship and 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 for for people learning students learning uh you know so uh before you know we would uh, go to conferences and network and and have dinners and honestly speaking some dinners are fantastic you you sit sit next to a very interesting person you make some good connection but some dinners were so boring and <laughs> you you're sitting next to someone who's just just uh, quite boring so uh i th- i think actually we can become more efficient you know we we uh meet online with the people that that we really want to meet with talk with and uh, uh and of course in the future well, you know once is hopefully once we have vaccine we also can meet you know together in a restaurant or something but um i i think uh, actually things might become more more efficient i mean in some way it was kind of random and and a bit of luck before you know uh, you, you might meet people at a conference or these uh, startup events or hackathons etc uh, some of them are great some of them are boring and uh, uh, maybe i think things will become more efficient and also uh, uh, the incredible amount of knowledge which is online now i mean just i mean even if you just stay on one website youtube just one website i mean i think 24 hours a day you could learn so many things uh, that's just one website and, and we have billions of websites out, out there right um but uh, so i think uh, uh, you know uh, uh, in in some way we 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 may become more efficient and this this is maybe some uh, something similar to the shopping example i gave before i mean uh, why why should we walk up and down the supermarket aisle with a trolley and uh, you know look at all the packets of cereal and decide which one or but you know so uh, uh, we might become very efficient in all parts of our life and more time to learn i mean uh, uh, there is just so much content even just on youtube that 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 people can learn uh, and i think also people will be more receptive to um <clears throat> meeting people online you know so so we saw this with the virtual dating you know like when i was a kid uh growing up in the 80s i mean that would seem so weird i mean that you would uh, meet someone online for dating i mean that, that, that we i mean I, i wouldn't even think that would be possible but it's now normal you know i i read in some statistics most uh couples are meeting online first you know so so in some ways it makes sense it's you know you you, you go to a bar and you randomly meet people and you, you might find someone that you like but uh with these uh online dating sites it, it just matches people together uh, uh very efficiently so i think a lot of so so you can see some similarity right to the to the to the online dating and 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 uh, yeah. entrepreneurship going online you know entrepreneurs will meet each other online and they might carry that on in, into the the real world like they'll meet in quite cafes or restaurants but you know the, the you might be able to have much more efficient way of meeting and people that you can you can you can work with so i think you know the the digitization that we're essentially you know that we had to we had to we were forced to do it you know because of the coronavirus but a lot of things will, will remain with us because it's just simply so efficient and maybe before we think oh no it's not the same uh you know uh to do it online but then we realize okay actually it's basically the same you know we realized that so so i think uh, that will continue in the future that we will we'll see a much much more uh hybrid society there there, there of course will be you know thing times where we meet physically you know especially after there's a vaccine but i think a lot of the online activities will continue and and uh, you know we're seeing that in 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 everything uh, from schools to uh, uh universities and uh, companies i think twitter twitter told all the employees they can work from home for, forever if they want um uh, and as i said even things like online dating which which we couldn't even imagine a few years ago and then now now is the majority of people are doing that
Perfect, great. So, Arvin, this brings us to the basic understanding about you as an individual. Like, you know, I would like to understand from you that uh, COVID has been a uh, not just an economical or uh, I'll say that business or productive issue, but it is also a personal crisis, right? Uh, people getting locked down in, in uh, new places, right? Uh, not able to travel back home, and also like you know, uh, uh, there is there is a sense of a uh, lot of uh, nervousness because of the fear of corona. So how how do you see that like you know people can cope up mentally with the challenge being imposed by COVID? And are you doing something different like you know from meditation to listening to song? Did you believe <laughs> would, would 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 be something uh, which can release the stress that people would be facing because of COVID? Well, yes, I think a lot of people went through it. A lot of people, a lot of people have gone through stress, and uh, a lot. Some people are handling handling it in different different ways. I mean, um, so I mean, it, it really shows the spectrum of personalities. I mean, you have on the one side people who couldn't care less and they just carry on like normal. Uh, you know, like you see some U.S. Uh, states and like Florida, which are hit very hard now, but they were just like partying as if nothing was going on but now they're one of the worst i think i think it's the worst per capita in the world now for coronavirus um, um and other people who are very extremely scared i mean literally not even left their house for three months so so you have that kind of spectrum of, of people's reactions but um in general um i think that uh, uh you know uh, it, it, it is a very fearful disease because um uh, it is so contagious. That is the problem. I mean, the, the problem is so so contagious. I mean, I was reading a article where you know in China where it first started, uh, there were a lot of cases from a restaurant, and they realised it was a salt shaker. People were sharing this, you know, just so <laughs> people were just sharing the salt shaker, you know. And uh, we've never imagined a disease where you can die just from pouring salt on your food. Uh, uh, so so it is it is it is very scary. I think the first few weeks, uh, I, I read a lot of news, and you know, you read New York Times, and I read a lot of news, and it's just constant barrage of terrible news. So I think uh, uh, I, 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 I decided that uh, it, 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 it just makes uh, your brain feel very, very fearful because you're reading all the worst news. So I think you have to have an element of fear because you don't want to be reckless. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you know, you, I think we have to stop reading. You know, people literally get a, addicted to the news now because and it's literally 24-hour coverage of uh, coronavirus. Uh, uh, actually, my PhD supervisor told me, don't read any news. <laughs> just don't read any news. It's, it's just going to make you feel worse. So um, I, I think actually we have to break out of the news cycle and, uh, you know, uh, keep it in the mind, you know, do the social distancing and wear masks and just try to do the right thing. But, you know, I think, I think we have to just uh, stop, stop looking at the news all the time because it's, it's just, it's just endless bad news. And, and I think our brains are very much, you know, our brains are very much uh, like, uh, uh, you know, engineering terms, we call control systems, you know, so, you know, it's uh, what, what goes in is what's, what's going to come out. So, if you're if you're reading uh, bad news all day long, you're you're just going to get extremely stressed. So try to uh, do other things like uh, watch movies, listen to music, uh, you know, do your work, uh, uh, you know, have online meetings, uh, you know, do do video calls like this. Um, so so I think uh, unfortunately our brains will become very very fearful if we look at the news. It's it's uh, it's all bad news now and then. And if you look at a lot of newspapers, it's basically it's the, the only story now is coronavirus. So, um, you know, I say that uh, you just have to stop it. You, you just have to, you know, say, OK, look, I'll read at the most half an hour a day or one hour a day, you know, put a limit on it. And then and then look at other things. Like I said, could be YouTube videos, TED Talks, uh, things which are positive for your brain uh, and, and will help you to uh, calm down, you know. So, so, so I think you know having a happy medium is the best. We don't want to be uh, become nervous wrecks, and uh, we all end up in the psychiatrist after this. And we also don't, don't want to be too reckless, like those uh, 
you know, young people going to the bars all the time, whatever. So, you know, I think a happy me a medium is the best way in the in the middle. That's that's a great advice. Like you know, I also fully agree that uh, reading a lot of negative news makes you negative. So yes, you you're right. Like you know, we have to understand sometimes also like you know now the, the new trends of fake news, right? Suddenly people start talking whatever they want to, and sometimes they're they're not even like you know factually right. So I fully agree with you that actually people should be doing something which they believe is more interesting to for them. Go and watch a nice movie on Netflix, right? Learn something yes. new with you. So I 100% I agree with you. And I, I love what you said, right? You know, having this type of video call because I always believe that the best way of utilizing your time is to talk to people who are more intelligent than you. So that is what I'm doing today, right? <laughs> Learning from someone like you this is a privilege. So thanks for doing that. So now that brings us to the, the, the last section of our discussion. Uh, I would like from you to understand for the young entrepreneurs and those maybe who are still in colleges who want to be an entrepreneurs, that you would have seen that because of COVID, uh, suddenly it is difficult to raise funds. Right, uh, there are investors who want to not invest in plain research, but something which is more tangible. Because people are yes. not cited once whenever you have such a critical or life-changing event. Because people are paranoid, whether actually, but uh, there is no long term. There is everything short term. So, what would be your advice to young uh, uh, entrepreneurs who want to be tech startup uh, founders uh, going forward? That what they should do or what they shouldn't do, including your advice on which technologies to pick, as well as advice on overall. How to be more effective in raising funds to growing their businesses? Well, you know, I think I think we can see a general trend to the digitization, and uh, which has been greatly accelerated because of coronavirus. So I think getting into any area which digitizes, uh, uh, you know, things. But um, uh, you know, so on on the very very let's say advanced end, I mean, there's robotics. I mean, one thing about social distancing is. Uh, if we all had robots now, we could we could uh, uh, have robots to uh, you know help us to clean our house, uh, go out and do do our shopping or whatever. I mean, I had to unfortunately I had to stop our uh, you know we I had a housekeeper and uh, you know we had to stop stop it for three months and and uh, they're going to start next week because Malaysia the cases are very, are very getting very low now. You know it's uh, almost getting to less than ten a day now, so. So they're going to start again next week, but for three months they were out of work, you know. Um, uh, but uh, in the in the future, you know, surely we're going to have robots to do to do all the housework and do all the chores and do the laundry and all that thing that uh, uh, you know. Then then we uh, humans can spend time doing more more, uh, let's say, higher level things. It could be writing music. It could be starting a business. Uh, you know, so I think uh, robots are going to become very important in the future. But you know, on on, on the more shorter term, ha I think all entrepreneurs really should look at the ma massive trend of the uh, digitalization. Uh, uh, maybe maybe most people are not going to be comfortable to go to restaurants for a long time, but they still want to eat the you know food, and uh, that maybe they can't cook a particular. You know, for example, I'm not very good at cooking Chinese food, but I, uh, I like to eat Chinese food. But uh, 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 so, so you know, uh, being the, all these apps now where you can order order food and they, they bring it to your door. I mean, all this is becoming uh, a very uh, a, a big space, and I think there's a lot of space for entrepreneurs to to allow you know apps which allow people to uh, do do things online. People are still going to eat. People still want to eat. So you know, being able to order online is is a, is a very useful. Um, on the other on the other hand, we have to be careful. Some industries, I think, they're going to be in trouble a long time. I mean, look at Airbnb. We thought Airbnb was just the greatest thing on earth, right? <laughs> until until last year, and now people are thinking that's like the worst thing you want to do is want to stay at someone else's house. You know, like it sounds. Uh, horrifying, you know. So, so, so digitization, but in the right areas. I think uh, uh, definitely in terms of travel, it's all going to change. I, I heard in US, people are buying, um, you know, the the recreational vehicles. You know, like they're basically, you know, uh, big big vans, and they have, you know, the, the so instead of staying in a hotel, they stay in the in their in their van and drive it around the country, so they can do the 
social isolation, they feel safe. And, and I can't remember which company, but they're selling so many recreational vehicles now. They've never sold so many. Uh, uh, so uh, travel and uh, is going to change radically. I mean, I, I would say that, you know, if you're not an entrepreneur, avoid those industries where uh, which which really which really you know got very badly affected by coronavirus you know so airlines are going to go out of business i mean uh, 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 it's not going to be the end of flying but a lot of airlines are not going to survive this uh, and uh, hotels i mean uh, you know people now think oh my gosh is is it, it was was the main uh, clean enough. Uh, this, this, it was a maid sick, or you know, cleaning my room. So uh, you know, those industries I think entrepreneurs should should avoid. But those industries where people are working more from home, they're doing more school from home, uh, they're they're playing more games at home. Uh, I think they're big areas that you know young entrepreneurs should should get into, and uh, and there's there's really big opportunities there. You know, uh, look at look at those industries which are the intersection of people staying at home more, plus uh, you know, digitization, uh, whether it's ordering food or doing education online, etc. Well, that's some very very important insights which you have shared, and I I believe like you know because of Corona we would see that Mr. Kim Jong is one of the smartest guy. He used to travel with his own train wherever he used to grow. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So yeah, hot, hotels, uh, I would also love to give them a skip next time I'm traveling somewhere and definitely staying in someone's home is not an option. So it's always good to have your own train. Right. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, thanks a lot, Adrian. It was a pleasure talking to you. Uh, I've learned a lot. Uh, it was very insightful for me and I'm very sure that the audience will also learn uh, based on the insight you have given. Thanks for your time. Thank you. I look forward to be in touch with you. Stay safe. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. It was great, great to speak to you. and. Uh, and uh, uh, my greetings to everyone who watches this video, the young entrepreneurs. And thank you, thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you. Stay safe too.